front of Michigan. Right there. This place, this community, this soul, the spirit, this land, everything, the aesthetics, the, the beauty, it really gives birth to a lot of things, a lot of greatness. Greatness. There's so much power here, it can move the whole world. I'm going to introduce you right now. It is nice to go home. back on this one and that is good. We're from Corona. It's a town. It's about halfway between uh, <laughs> Flint and Lansing, a <laughs> little bit north. Uh, you know what I mean? Well, you know, if you're gonna go, you're gonna get off, and you're gonna drive through, you know, seven miles of nothing but farms on both sides. Uh, then when you get to the community, there's like one stoplight, uh, maybe two. No, I think there's two. Downtown, you got some. You got a little uh, stretch there of I don't know five blocks or so. You got. Little knick-knack shops, restaurants, office buildings, um, party store. We got a new library. It's the county, Corona's the county seat of Shiawassee County, so we have the courthouse downtown. We have uh, the county sheriff department is downtown. Um, but it all happens right downtown. You get, you get outside of downtown and it's uh, farmland real quick like. I've heard it said by many different people on many different occasions, but there's just something special about Corona, that Corona thing. Well, I, I, I jokingly call it the bread basket of the state of Michigan. Um, it's, it's right in the heartland, man. This is, I think this is as close as you're going to get to a stereotypical Midwestern town without going to a cornfield in Iowa. I mean, this is, you know, it's pretty down home. It's the myth, and I'm right in the middle. It's surrounded by farms. And bar. Oh, I, I always tell everybody it's between Flint and Lansing. That's what I think. It too. is. To describe it. And that it's That's like deliverance with a town tub. I pull in the town tub and then I see some guy sitting with a beer in the front seat and two kids in the back. A demographic online one time that described Corona as pickup trucks with a gun rack in the back window. Expect to see uh, cornfields and tarvey. People say Corona, they're like, from other towns, like, oh, that's just a heck farm town. But it is. A lot of folks around here are pretty, uh, keep to themselves, pretty proud, um, pretty religious. 
I think that Karana people are, tend to be very conservative um, and very set in their ways. Change scares a lot of people in Karana. Pretty quiet and like to just hang out and have a good time. I think that they value uh, their community. I think they value each other. Imagine an immense cornfield and then dropping this little dense civilization right in the middle of it. That's kind of Karana. A lot of farms from around this area that have been here forever and ever. And it's a rural farm community. It seems to be very safe. I like our neighborhood. It just seems like a homey, Mayberry type place to, uh, to grow up. Little slice of down home Americana. Yeah, all the good things that you hear about small town America. Life on the off ramp. Just kidding. Small town, <laughs> farm community, easy. Oh, I mean, they can picture it right away. Yeah. Just a town. It's got everything Small you need. Town. People from the outside perceive you as being some kind of hick if you tell them you're from Corona. It's a hick town. There's no getting around it. We just give off this hickish vibe, I guess. I don't know if it's if it is the cheap beer we drink or the fact that we don't have any real cool social scenes, you know, or something like that, but I don't know. We just we uh, we reek of hick, I suppose. I think what is unique about Karna is that it's one of those things where you know where you're always at. You're never going to be different. I mean, you're. I mean, which is a bad thing in a way, I guess, because you're who you are. Yeah. But I mean, it can change, I guess. But you're yourself, regardless. I mean, people know you for who you are. Like, you don't have to try to be somebody else. People know you and know where you came from, and that can be a good thing in ways or a bad thing, I guess. Yeah. It depends on who you are. It's quiet, pretty much uneventful. I'm more of a hometown type of girl, so I, I don't know, I liked it. I don't like change, so. Stay on the tar reef. I'm glad I grew up in Kana <clears throat> just because I, even though I had all these freedoms and could kind of do whatever I wanted, I still kept my innocence, which I don't think I would have done had I grew up elsewhere. Yeah, I wouldn't want to grow up anywhere else. Like, I when I was younger, I was excited to leave. But once I left and have been other places, I realized, hey, Corona's not such a bad place after all. Absolutely. I'll probably never leave here. If I do, it won't be, but within 10, 15 miles of here anyways. Is there, everything I like to do is right here in Corona. I like to hunt. There's great hunting property around here in Shiawassee County. Um, there's ponds to fish. There's a Shiawassee River that runs through downtown Corona. Um, there's, I'm an outdoorsman, so there's a lot of, a lot of things to do around here. Corona is very comfortable. You know everyone. Everyone knows you. Uh, very close knit families, close knit friends. Um, I think people are scared to walk away from that. It is a good school. It's a good place to grow up in. It's a nice little town, but it's a little town. You live here in Corona, don't you? Yeah, well, I live more in Bancroft now, but yeah. Yeah, yeah I thought you did. Yeah, you yeah. know who I am. Oh, absolutely. You know. Corona was Grandpa's comfy chair, I guess. And, like, he always sat in that chair. If somebody new came into town and sat in that chair, it's cool as long as they don't, like, break a leg or do something to mess with how comfortable that chair is. You know what I mean? You can sit in it just as long as the next time I sit in it, it's a comfy chair. Him and all of his friends went around and picked up all this dead roadkill on all the back roads one night and they went and they were going to just throw him on his porch. We got and caught I, by the cops at Rochelle's house. Jesse and I ran out into the cornfield. Damn. Think of on a fire. Remember we uh, got out of just, school that day. Yeah. There's some history. They have a nice 4th of July celebration. 4th of July commission was literally like 10 people that would meet and they just talked about what they could do to get things together on the 4th of July. And my mom was on the uh, on the committee, and I used to get stuck running uh, like uh, watermelon eating competitions and crap like that down here when it was still in its real infancy. But over the last five years or so, it's just friggin' blown up with sponsorships from uh, Myers and the Argus yep. Press and stuff like that. So they sponsored fireworks. It's now it's a pretty big fireworks display. And they've got events all day long, a huge parade, and now the committee's up to like 60 people that are on it. It's friggin' amazing. What about Glorious 4th of July fireworks. What about the oh. house we go and the fair? I was just thinking about the Shadow <laughs> County Fair. 
There's the fair. A lot of people come to the Shiawas County Fair, which is still in Corona. McCurdy Park. There's power lines and barns. <laughs> and then the bridge. House. And then your bridge. Isn't it near the bridge? I walked to the bridge. Owasso is the neighboring town, the Yang to Corona Yin. Owasso just kind of spews into Corona and just kind of takes over it. I mean, a lot of people that live here uh, that aren't in agriculture are in the auto industry, and they work in Flint, they work in Lansing, and are UAW shop workers. Corona is a GM town. 90% works at GM. They all drive. Did. Mm -hmm. Used to, yeah, right. Well, we were allowed to because our parents all worked third shift, so your curfew was like 3.30, 4.30 in the morning. I don't think parents push their kids to move on to do bigger and better things. It's kind of like, after you graduate, you'll work for me, or you'll work on the farm. Do you think people in Corona are open-minded? No. No, not at all. <laughs> Do you think people in Corona are open-minded? No. <laughs> Do you think people in Corona are open-minded? No. <laughs> no. No, I mean, yeah. No. <laughs> I think that uh, possibly people who have seen other places in Corona uh, or outside of the community are open-minded, but it does seem to be a rather closed-minded uh, community all around. It's kind of that uh, Bible Belt of America in the Midwest. Like, well, what's open? What do you mean by that? They'd get defensive about it immediately because all of a sudden they're, you're being accusational with them. They know they're a racist or a homophobe or whatever. An open-minded group group of people I don't think we're looking at. It's just too, it's too small, it's too homey, it's too, this is what we've always done. The people that feel not threatened, but oppressed by that, are the people that you see just, you know, hey man, I gotta get out of Corona, you know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of pressure in the way of, this is the way it is, this is the way it'll be. Stay in the target. Change isn't like, uh, doesn't seem huge. I would say the old people are happy and content, the older people, with being here. They've been here their whole lives, and some of the kids leave like the young people are excited to get out and move away. We have a crowd that is probably 20 years older than I am, 43, that really want nothing to change. A crowd that is 20 years younger than I wants to leave. The crowd that I'm in would love to change things, and we are actually working to change some things and trying to revitalize downtown Corona. But we have no support from the young generation that are leaving and the older generation, which wants everything to stay. I think people in Corona are pretty, have been pretty sheltered, it seems like. A lot of the people I know or run into, they seem to have the same opinions as their friends or as their mothers or fathers. Or they repeat what somebody else said instead of coming up with their own ideas. The older generation has has probably a, a certain view and then the next generation has a certain view. I would probably say the younger people are would be more open-minded. Sometimes when you go to like the football games and stuff and like uh, you're in the stands and I don't know it seems like some of the parents are kind of redneck you know what I mean like big time. Some of the people from Corona embarrass me. You see some groups around here that are that are pretty racist that uh, go out to bars or to parties or whatnot and like to start problems, always using different words that are racist. Do you see racial or other kinds of prejudice present in Corona, Quincy? Yeah. Why we're doing this? <laughs> <laughs> it's, always about to, it's always about to buy more. <laughs> yeah, I do. Of course you see it everywhere though. Experience, I would have to say so. But I think that's everywhere. I don't think it's because it's Corona. I mean, anywhere you go, it's like that. No more than I think you would see anywhere else. 
where there's an extremely underrepresented minority. Well, it's a pretty white community. It's, it's always has been, really. The people in a small community that's basically white, that's all they know, so that's, you know, that's all they fall into. It's just a matter of fact of, you know, this my, what my dad thinks, my grandpa thinks, and that's it, because he's never moved from here, and he's never moved from here, and, you know, and people are who they are because they're minorities and this and that, and when you get on the <laughs> to the real world, that's not really the way it is, but that's why people want to perceive it. I didn't even really know what race was probably till I was like third or fourth grade. Really, I didn't know any different. Like, kids were kids. My parents distinctly remembered going to um, parades in Owasso in the 1950s where the Ku Klux Klan marched in the parade. Still, I think people around here, you hear jokes. People around here will tell um, off-color jokes that I, you know, that offend me, but around here they think it's funny because it's just the way people are. I view it as a uh, lack of experience, you know, lack of uh, um, what they call the contact hypothesis. The people that can't be open-minded and the people get, that can't grow and experience and open their mind to anything are just stifling this town. You know, they have a lot of great people and a lot of great talent around here that they don't support or encourage. I think that there are a lot of racial prejudices here. Uh, not, not a lot of um, diversity in this community. Maybe a little bit more so now than when we were growing up, but a lot of haters here. A lot of bigots, racists, rednecks. And it hasn't changed. No. That's not any different than it was 25 years ago when I was in school. Yeah. It's, it's not any different, and that's what's sad. It's kind of cool to be able to drive by, you know, like the uh, one-room schoolhouse where my dad went to school and where, you know, my grandparents even went to school, you know what I mean? difference that you have Now take the good and try the bad I don't think I want to be me drinking I like to drink There's something wrong There's something wrong Okay. You outgrew them. No, they drink water. <laughs> that was fast. Soak, 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 soak. What do cows drink? No. Oh, no, cows drink water. and a lot of closeness where people just, for whatever reason, it seems like the people support the school and not, you know what I mean, not even just sports, but like, it seems like the, the school is like really well supported, even as opposed to like uh, communities in the area. The relative ease was intended to be a, a grade raiser. We will be remembered as unique, fun-loving, and of course, the class of Rob Dalton in it. <laughs> I've been told that our class worked hard at having fun and had fun at working hard, and I agree. We know how to have a good time together. Some of my most memorable times were those in a class, at an assembly, or at a sporting event, when we all laughed and had a good time, not only as a class, but as a huge group of friends. And I moved to Corona because you, got, you were starting school and I didn't like the Owasso school system. We lived in Owasso, went to Corona. We had to pay tuition to go to Corona or go to Owasso. It was it worth definitely, it. I mean, we didn't think yeah. twice about going to Corona. Corona has a good school system and they're pretty good at sports, honestly. I mean, I think Corona really is. Having gone to high school there, it seems like a lot of people value like, uh, like a team or a community pride or a spirit. 
Um, it seems to be mostly based around like sports and uh, uh, the school. I just remember Corona people at that time in their life are so fucking proud of Corona. Rah, rah, sis, boom, bah. Go Corona! Smash right through that line of blue. Watch the stars keep rising. Rise to the stars and we're fighting with the blue. Rise to the stars and see that line as we can. We're all in the sky. Fight! Oh yeah! Maybe had I been in the FFA with everybody else, I I definitely valued the cavalier feather in the hat. Well, it's always seemed to be sports. Um, parents are big into you know, baseball, football. Very proud of their teams, proud of their kids that way. That was a good game. We have good sports programs. The whole community, usually everybody in the in the town visits football games on Friday nights. It's a pretty big deal around here, the football games. We'll get better, yeah. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Your 50 50 tickets. The whole of the place is packed in Corona in the mid Michigan B. Cavs are driving early, too. Brett Geskin. The Corona homecoming court taking on Alma tonight. Corona showing some offensive touch here. Brett Giskin going to find Adam Porter here on the long bomb. This game goes to overtime. Corona wins it by the score of 20 to 14. That's what number that I'd have been wearing. At the quarterback spot, 42. What a <laughs> bitch wearing it. <laughs> Hey, two yet got to be pitching. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would have been. Good play action. Nice shot. That was good for him. Oh, we got a man. Take it! Yeah! 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 But I think if you stay here, I think your opportunities from a small town are really limited. Some great catches by Danny. Brent? Wait. Corona said Brent could have. Oh, you know what, Brent? We're not a 2.4 student. Probably don't have a grade to go to a major college, but uh, probably going to a great, probably go good, probably trade school be an electrician or something like that. And I go, you know, I really don't want to do that. And they're like, yeah. yeah, but you don't really fall in like the three point bracket or anything like that. So I really don't know where you'd fit in. I'm like, okay, that's fair. So what do you think about me going to college? Do you like to weld? Most people move away from Corona. Uh, so that they can uh, live in a place with a few more bars and uh, a few more things to do. You have to move out so you don't marry your relatives. To pursue an education or career opportunities. To go to school. To go to school. And discover new possibilities and <laughs> opportunities. Because it's very limited. You're limited in your opportunities, you're limited in your entertainment. You're limited in social activities. You're limited in your political views. It's pretty much living in a box. There's not a whole lot to do around here. A lot of people get antsy and want to go out and see what the rest of the world's like. The city folk may not uh, may not necessarily know how to milk a cow or 
uh, you know what I mean, how to use the cane on swine. <laughs> but the the overall mindset and view, uh, you know what I mean, seems to be uh, pretty much the same. If they don't have a family farm to uh, take over and that be their requirement, they're pretty much trying to get out of here. People who get away and come back are probably a lot better off than people who just stay here. Your life is uh, out there for the world to see, the small world of Corona to see. And uh, even though you go away, people tend to believe that they, uh, that they know you when you come back, uh, more so than you would wish them to. You know, like most uh, small towns, it's a close-knit community. And I'd say even more so than uh, other towns. I believe that the, the people our age, even when they move away, uh, tend to be friends and uh, tend to hang out, live together in college, live together uh, later in life. And it seems as though a higher proportion of them than maybe from other communities uh, carry on friendship, I think, after they leave here or, or as they stay. I went to Eastern to live with my Corona friends. No, but that's the thing. Like, a lot of people don't do that. Like, they're like, what do you mean you live with three guys you went to high school with? I found myself a lot of times saying, oh, yeah, this is my buddy from high school. Oh, this is so-and-so, he's from Corona. Oh, these guys, uh, you know, they're, they're both from Corona. And I had this girl tell me, I thought you told me that Corona was like a, a small school, it was a small place. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, it is, absolutely. And she's like, well, everybody here is from Corona. I mean, how many, did you graduate like a thousand people or what? And I guess that's really, when it really dawned on me that, no, I just, inherently took a large section of Corona with me wherever I went. Um, wherever I go, I'm taking a piece of Corona with me. If it means people, if it means culture, if it means my mentality, um, it's, it's part of me and it, it moves along with me. Comradeship, if you will, that, uh, that those people do carry on, I, that makes me proud. It's nice to be able to go to a place, um, a house party or something and run into a large group of people that you hung out with when you were younger and you can share stories about then and share stories about what you're doing now. Because the people from Corona, that's where I grew up, so those will be my closest friends always. Like, I'll make friends outside of Corona, but it will never be the same. I have a lot of other friends from other towns, but they're not as close as my friends from here. Being from Corona is almost like being in a club. Everybody Don't go not from away. Corona love people that are from People from Corona have no problem getting friends out of Corona. Yeah, I think, it, I think always, in every instance, I, they've always been uh, friends with my friends from Corona. Stay in the target. Uh, my peers from Corona are uh, like a flock of bees. Mm -hmm. There's a strong sense of, uh, of community and uh, like loyalty in Corona. It, it's a totally different mentality. Onions, something goes wrong with one, and everyone knows about it, and they'll help out like pheromones, you know. You feel somehow like connected to them, and uh, you would stand up for them no matter what. It seems like if you're from Corona, you just like, like, you know what I mean? It's just like a group. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a team. Team Corona. Like even if you hate the guy that's from Corona, if he's from Corona. It's like you're on the same side anyways, no matter what. Huh? What is that? I don't know what you call it, but it's just like a gel, <laughs> a Corona gel. It's a phenomenon yeah. because I can't explain why that's the case, but I definitely have had more than three people that I've met from other places and, I, and, you know, they're like, well, you know, what are you doing, you know, this weekend or whatever? Oh, me and a couple friends from high school are getting together and they're like, you know, are you kidding with me? That's a good thing about Corona, I guess, you know. This is what dreams are made of. Well, just that we're uh, friendable. Friends and family. I don't have anything to drink. Good time. Excuse now me. Now I'll tell you. Excuse me, Mom. Oh, yes. Brother, give us something you're feeling at the moment. Something I'm feeling? I'm just glad to have friends like you guys. And that's why I said earlier that I hang, still know and talk to a lot of people that were class, <coughs> like we're really close. <coughs> and if you just talk to one person from Corona, they usually always yeah, know they what usually know who's is doing. Oh, well, so what do you want to do now? Uh, around here? Um, jumbos? 
Okay. Geeskins. Geeskins taking a big screen out of his buddy's house, taking it to his house and having a kegger. There's definitely a lot of partiers. There might be more partiers than normal, but as far as like what they're willing to try, I don't I don't think that differs that much from other places that I've you know, like friends that I've had from other places have told me. But uh yeah, there's I think a definitely definitely a big amount of people drink out there for sure. <laughs> Crown, dude. The reason why we cheers is because you can see the drink, you can feel the drink, smell the drink, taste the drink. The last of the five senses, which takes all five senses running in parallel lines to enjoy anything in life, is you must hear the drink. Thriller, cheers. You're from Corona, you're going to be a big partier. When I got kicked off the cheerleading squad for drinking. <laughs> I think, you know, inherently a lot of people take the drink for, uh, out of boredom. Corona kids like to drink and get in fights. Drink a lot, party a lot, have a good time. I'd say there's a decent amount of talented musicians there. Like you can even see it in the band, like the marching band. Like I always thought Kermit had an awesome marching band. Nathan, where did you learn how to play keyboard like that? Uh, yeah, Corona. Corona, yeah, yeah, we have two guys from Corona, one from Fenton, one from Lansing. We're listening to the fuzz. We're all originally from Corona, though. Oh, oh so they're Corona natives, and they're so proud of it because they really made a point of that. You're half the population of Corona. <laughs> <laughs> shows that we could put together with the theater, you know, and, uh, you know, in the high school or in the middle school gymnasium or in the high school cafeteria, you know, to be able to do something that was worth people spending money to see, you know, I'm proud of that. Uh, you know, the music that came out of there and the, the odyssey of the mind, you know, I mean, world champion upon world champion from Corona there, and, you know, it's, uh, yeah, there's... There are a lot of creative people from Corona, and a lot of people that, you know, that could certainly put Corona on the map someday, I think, at least in our generation. I realized that fact the other day. I, I told my I girlfriend that she can't 
I said we were driving off the Tarvey and she looked at me like, what the hell is Tarvey? Work, what's Tarvey? Tarvey? Tarvey is like asphalt. Yes. <laughs> that is asphalt. It's blacktop. Tarvey is blacktop. It's blacktop. Uh, that's the blacktop. Tarvey, yeah, like elementary school where you could have gone to Tarvey or you'd get in trouble at recess. For some reason it was called Tarvey, and I've never heard anyone else call it Tarvey, and if you ask someone that's not from Corona what Tarvey is, they usually don't know, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tarvey Tar yeah. Tar is like blacktop, it's like the, what the roads are made out of. Uh, road? I think your kids used to say you played on the Tarvey, but I don't remember why it's called that. Is that just a Corona thing? Oh, that was from grade school. Yeah. Alpha Meyer. Can't go off the tarvy. Some days when it was muddy, you know, uh, they didn't want kids tracking mud through the school. So it was called the tarvy recess. You had to stay in the tarvy. That just meant the parking lot. So you couldn't, couldn't go off into the grass. You had to stay on the tarvy. Had children young. Uh huh. And stayed here with the kids. It is still pretty good for kids, bringing up your kids. I like Corona, always have. It's just a fun city to live in. I think it's a good community to raise a family in or uh, get involved in community activities. It's a pretty good place to live and you know, raise a family. Corona's a good place. Okay. You meet somebody from Corona, you probably would remember that person. Hopefully you can for some weird, out. some weird reason. Actually, I do think that people in Corona do value their family probably more than anything. I guess I can honestly yeah, say that I can probably yeah, see yeah, myself staying in town. Corona probably does have uh, a lot of for me. But I think it's a valuable part of our society. Yeah, it's a good place to raise kids. It's a really lovely brother. It's a nice place to raise kids. It's a nice place to raise kids. It's a nice place to raise kids. What is Corona's life like? Corona's like a box of chocolates where all the chocolates are the same and you always know what you're going to get. Too small. Too small, you end up with small minds. Nobody wants to think outside of their own little kingdom. It's the way it is, but people like living in a town where you don't have to worry about shit. It was, yeah. Yeah, like I had a great time in high school, but I wouldn't want to like live there my whole life at all. Would you it's, raise a family there? It's, it's, I think it'd be nice, it would, I would raise a family there, but I, it'd be nice to raise a family there, but I can actually go somewhere else. But if I was, like, if there was no way I could go anywhere else, yeah. Corona would be a great place. But it would bother me how, what was mine, did a lot of people there are. It really is the whole key place, though. For as many people that, that leave Corona and put it down, um, it really is a good place to be raised, and I think you have to look beyond your own personal lives and look at the community in itself. It's a great community. It's a sense of community. You really feel like people care. You go to another city outside, people don't care. They don't care to meet their neighbors. Here you can walk up to your neighbor and ask for a cup of sugar and they'll, they'll produce. There are big cities that everyone should experience. I think there are little cities that everyone should experience too. And I think that Corona is, is one of those cities that everyone should experience at least a little bit. We're a, a community of people that have a very, I think, very unique take. Uh, a unique take on family, a unique take on school, and certainly a unique take on friendship. This song is about Corona. Oh, oh fuck the camera girl on these bars, yeah, buddy. Like... Corona. No comment. Come on, come be in my movie. People still can have big dreams from these small communities. Yeah. So that was pretty important. That was pretty cool. Guys, more emotional.
Burr buys something. <laughs> It's just like, that's just where I grew up. I heard in Owasso, no one ever graduates and they're all stupid all the time. <laughs> It's a documentary that's for life. This is how I talk. How would you compare beers? I think you know, but you have no idea. I guess I'm a stereotypical Corona conservative. That's pretty much sum it up. Yes, farms and barns. That's what Corona is. Different, but good. We don't even have our own theater, and you know, our, the only place to have receptions in the middle of a cornfield. We graduated in '93. Okay, so '97, '98. Tony Beach. <laughs> <laughs> I graduated in 90. Everyone drank, everyone skinny dipped, and nobody wore suits because the water quality was so poor. And it said Corona, Michigan, and she had her hat on backwards <laughs> with her pony. Is high school that important? <laughs> I mean, who gives a fuck? This weird Corona family. Safe community, safe community, small clean, clean community. He's got this fucking nylon Columbia hat on and it's hot pink. <laughs> Go have a beer? Yeah, let's go drink. Better than a lasso? I think so. Uh, there's a song that stills my heartache with its wondrous golden chime. Cures my soul of all its sadness with the magic of its rhyme. Frees my past from every sorrow and defeats the world's sharp stings. Tis a mystic, mellow measure that the Shiawassee sings. A song of woodland places, of home and happy faces. A song of clover bloom and fields or rye. Of hearts the angels keep while they lie in dreamless sleep where the Shiawassee sings their lullaby. C-O! C-O-R-U! Are you? Are you? I bet you can.